So we'll be solving Dijkstra's using induction and what we are stating, what we are claiming is that whenever you're adding a city i to the set of visited cities, you're going to have optimal distance from the source to that particular city i. So that's the claim. And it's easy to verify for the very first city. So if you have, let's say, set of cities, union with the first city. Okay, this is the closest city initially to the source. So we already said why there can't be any intermediate city to this. So for k equal to 1, let's say, this is the condition which should hold true and it does. So the base condition is true. The second step is the assumption. So after n cities have been added to this set, right, the set has changed, we'll assume that the condition of optimal distances to all of these n cities is true. Okay, so this is our set, the violet amoeba. Uh, and all the cities inside this have optimal distances from the source, which is this node. Okay, we see that x and u are part of this set, visited set. Now for the induction step, what we're going to do is add node v to the set of visited cities. And when we are adding it, we are going to make a few claims. Okay, the first thing is that there exists a node y which you could have gone through and got a better path up to v. Better path meaning shorter path. So the best possible distance to v is actually less than what we found, which is d of v. All right, that's the first condition. So we're claiming that y gives us a better path. So it exists outside the set that we already know. And because of that, it has to sometime go through our set. It has to go through the set of visited cities because source is inside this set. It definitely has to go through this set. Of course, x might be the source itself, okay? Next thing we see is that y has to exist outside of the set of visited cities. Uh, if y doesn't exist, then we can directly point to v, which doesn't make sense because that's initial distance. So y has to exist. x also has to exist because the visited set is over here. We are moving from the visited set to the unvisited set and then to v. So x has to exist. x could be equal to source also. Uh, x, by the way, is the most extreme city which is just next to y which which goes just goes out so this is the very first edge which is going out of the set of visited cities that we have okay x to y and then from y to some more cities up to v so the condition we get is that distance best possible distance to x plus the length from x to y this edge, it has to exist. There has to be one edge which is going from to outside the visit set. This plus this distance, which is some positive quantity, is equal to the best possible distance to node B. Okay, this is our claim. This is what we are going to try to contradict later on. So because of this non-positive or rather non-zero quantity or greater than or equal to zero quantity, we can use this notation. All right, so that's the second condition. The third condition is that because X and Y are just on the boundary of visited and not visited, it means that we had visited X at some given point of time, right, when we were adding that to our set. When we added it to our set, we must have tightened this edge or not tightened that edge. But that gives us that d of y is less than or equal to d of x plus this edge. So y. Okay, there's no guarantee that we did tighten that edge, that's why it's less than or equal to. But that's a condition. The fourth condition is that we did not go to d of y before we went to d of x. Okay, this was added to the set meaning that, of course, that distance from the source is lesser than the distance to y from the source. So d of y is greater than or equal to d of, d of x. 
and that's the fourth condition. And now let's try to simplify things. What is the best possible distance to x? Well, because we are using the assumption step where everything in the set at this given point of time is, is the shortest distance from the source. Okay, that is the assumption step. It means that the distance to x is the shortest, is the best possible distance. So, d of x plus this is equal to best possible to v. So, looking at the second and third condition, the LHS over here matches the RHS and this quantity is greater than the LHS here. This quantity is less than the RHS here. So we can skip these two terms and directly write D of Y here. Right. D of Y and we get rid of this extra constraint. Okay. Now, best possible distance is greater than this quantity. D of V is greater than best possible distance. So D of V actually is greater than this quantity. All right. So the final condition has to be changed a bit. This condition is true by the way. So uh, d of x is less than or equal to d of y because it was added first to this set. So is the case for u. But the interesting case is actually v. So d of v has to be less than or equal to d of y because you are trying to add this node to the set of visited nodes before you are adding y. So by the greedy condition, by the principle of choosing the minimum distance from the source, this is the condition we have. Okay, v is being added before y, so this condition holds. And now you see d of y is actually greater than or equal to d of v. So cancelling out the terms, we have d of v less than d of v and this cannot happen it's a contradiction so we have proved that whenever you are adding a new node to the city uh, to the visited cities set you are actually you already have found out the minimum distance to that node from the source. So d of v is optimal for all v. Okay, so the proof of Dijkstra's is not so well known and that's the reason why I wanted to discuss this. Uh, the next video will be using Dijkstra's in a more advanced way and if you want a notification for that of course you can subscribe. Uh, if you want any doubts or suggestions to be cleared uh, you can leave them in the comments below. I'll be sharing the code for this in the links below along with some useful references. So until next time then, see you.